Hello everyone. Today we are going to do the part 4 lecture video of the same chapter human health and diseases and today we are going to discuss about the fungal, protozoan and helminth diseases. So before we go, before we get started, let's discuss a few points about fungi, protozoan and helminth. So what this fungi is? What is fungi? How can you describe them? Are they prokaryotes or eukaryotes? What are they? See, a fungi is a eukaryote. Okay, it's a eukaryote. They are eukaryotic organisms that include microorganisms such as yeast, molds, and we have an edible part of uh, fungi which we consume, and that is mushroom. So, the mode of nutrition, okay, they are actually heterotrophs. Okay, they are heterotrophs. What is the meaning of heterotrophs? When we talk about mode of nutrition, they are comprised of autotrophs and heterotrophs. When I say autotrophs, automatic. They can prepare their own food. It means they undergo photosynthesis. They are not dependent on any other source for food. Fungi is exclusively heterotrophic in nature, which means they are dependent on another source. It can be a source of organic matter, it can be debris, anything. But they can prepare their own food. That is, they cannot undergo photosynthesis. Okay? And another thing to add here is the movement. Some fungi are flagellated while others form spores. Fungi also include symbiotic relationship. So let's take the lichens here. Lichens, if you see, they, they are comprised of algae and fungi. They are present in the same place. They grow in the same place. They have a mutual understanding between both. They share the nutrients. They are kind of understanding that they don't affect each other. So they call that as symbiotic relationship in scientific terms. They play an essential role in the decomposition of organic matter and they have fundamental roles in the nutrient cycle and exchange in the environment while mostly fungi grow like hyphae like production and when we talk about reproduction terms they undergo both sexual and asexual reproduction and the therapeutic use of fungi we have one major therapeutic antibiotic produced from fungi and that is penicillin which was discovered by Alexander Fleming. Now coming on to the next. Protozoan or protozoa. Okay, are they eukaryotes or prokaryotes? So protozoans are single cell unicellular eukaryotic organisms, either free living or they are parasitic form. They feed on organic matter such as microorganisms, organic tissues, debris, and their movement is based on their flagella some are flagellated some have cilia some form spores okay so next they contain nucleus and other cell structures and mostly uh, the protist diseases that come from protozoans in humans are said to cause diseases in humans and since they contain cell uh, structures and nucleus the kind of resemblance with plants and animals, you can just compare them, they say, because they have a well-defined structure when compared to bacteria. Next, coming to helminths. Any idea what they are? The meaning of helminth is worms. Okay, they are simply worms. They are worm-like parasites to survive by feeding on a living host to gain nourishment and protection. And sometimes... If the growth goes beyond or if it is beyond a limit often causes illness in the host and these helminths are said to be invertebrates okay now let's go to the first part so now we are going to discuss the fungal diseases one by one so as I already said fungi they have advantages and they have disadvantages when I say advantages we have edible part where we consume mushrooms which is rich source of protein then we have antibiotics like penicillin extraction from it now when we talk about disadvantages we can just remember they are said to be or they are said to cause a lot of infections and the other name for fungal diseases itself stands for opportunistic infection what do you mean by opportunistic infections when the immune system of a particular host irrespective of what the host is if the immune system is found to be in a suppressed level these fungi easily gain entry into the host and to be honest once the fungal infections start coming into our body 
it's quite slow to get eradicated okay the eradication process is quite slow let's take the simple example dandruff that comes in your hair follicles what are they they are caused by fungi right so this is how the fungi uh, cause nuisance to humans especially and the other name for fungal diseases is opportunistic infections the fungal diseases in humans can either be caused by infection by mycosis or by toxic fungal metaply which is called as toxicosis next the fungi that invade the keratinized tissue mostly you see the fungi will be associated with skin nails okay they are called as deutero they are called as dermatophytes so dermatophytes are nothing but the ones which cause infections on the skin your nails has keratin in it right and fungal skin diseases are called as dermatomycosis many fungi belonging to the genera so what is the genera that is given here microsporum trichophytum and epidromophytum okay and here they have given an example ringworms so let's see here so what are these ringworms ringworm is a medical terminology which is known as tenia so what is it called as tenia okay it's a growing worm the dermatophytes survive on the dead layer of the keratin protein on the skin surface very important point heat and moisture support the fungal growth and they generally affect the skin folds and what are the symptoms of this particular disease appearance of red i mean dry scaly lesions on various parts of the body such as skin nails and scalp so these are the regions that are highly rich in keratin how can you prevent this it can be prevented by contact with infected areas you can prevent by having contact with the infected skin areas of personal items such as combs clothing when a person has dandruff simple you you not supposed to use the person's personal items like comb because you get to you get that transfer to yourself right next we are moving on to protozoan diseases but before we move into protozoan diseases let's discuss some more fungal diseases that i know so we have another set of diseases like uh, the names are aspergillosis you must have heard this is caused by the fungi aspergillus aspergillus is not just associated with humans it is also associated with the agricultural feed okay they form spores then another disease that i would like to add on here is candidiasis a very common disease and this is caused by the yeast candida okay the causative organism is candida and this disease is also called as oral thrush because it affects your throat your skin and you have something called severe or invasive candidiasis which is the extreme part of candidiasis and this is supposed to be relevant in people who are hospitalized for a long time in hospitals so what happens here if you see it forms a web formation in your mouth okay and this is particularly a uh, highly uh, what to say you can also give another name as i already said it's an opportunistic infection infection right this candidiasis is highly seen in people who are having a immunity which is at a very suppressed rate so when i say suppressed people have already people those who are already affected with a particular disease let's take an example of hiv patient they are already having complications in their body their immune system is in a very low rate okay at a very suppressed rate so these infections gain easy entry to the host and these occur as secondary infections to the person okay so these candidiasis then you have cryptococcuses which is found in soil but they are very uh, what to say they don't affect much of humans but sometimes people those who often walk barefoot on the soil when when the soil is not clean it's not you know it it's kind of lot of uh, debris in it lot of organic matter in it and you walk barefoot you ha have the chance of getting these diseases but mostly to be honest these fungal diseases are opportunistic infections they mostly occur as secondary infections in people those who already have diseases okay now let's move to the protozoan diseases here a very common disease to discuss malaria so as i already said malaria is a mosquito borne disease which is caused by the which is caused by the protozoan parasite belonging to the genus plasmodium 
and you have several species under it as i already said this is the genus name of the genus and you have spe several species in it you have ovale then you have vivax then you have malaria then you have falciparin so that's given down i think right humans are infected with any of these four species falciparin vivax plasmodium ovale plasmodium malaria plasmodium enters the human body as sporozoids sporozoids is the infectious form of it how do they enter by a vector and the vector is the anopheles mosquito it's a female mosquito okay the malarial parasite requires two hosts to complete the cells or this life cycle so one is human and the other is the mosquitoes to complete it life cycle okay so here you have a diagram which clearly shows the plasmodium life cycle here so it's a diagrammatic sketch okay so as i already said it requires two host right one is human and the other is the mosquito okay so here they are talking about the bite as i already said the sporozoid the infectious part of the plasmodium will be present in the salivary gland of the mosquito okay so once it bites so here the cycle goes like this okay once the bite occurs it forms in, it goes to the mid, mid gut that is the protozoans goes to the mid gut and from the mid gut it forms gamete and then it forms oocyanate it forms oocyst in the mid gut wall and once it forms sporozoids it goes into the salivary gland and it is visible in the salivary gland and the sporozoid is the infectious stage of the plasmodium and once this mosquito happens to bite a human the sporozoid gains easy entry into the blood and thereby causes malaria in human so here this time this side they are showing the same thing it's an invasive part they are showing how the cycle occurs in humans so here this side you have to your left you have the same cycle here they are talking about the different stages the trophozoid the merozoid this, then you have the different stages of what are the formation of this protozoan inside the mosquito and once it bites a human what cycle it undergoes this image clearly depicts that okay next disease from protozoan you have amebiosis and it is also called as amoebic dysentery and that is caused by entamoeba histolytica house flies act as mechanical carriers and serve to transmit the parasite from the feces of infected person to food and food products that is why you should never consume uncovered food you should never eat vegetables and uh, fruits without washing them that's why they inculcate this okay so it's monocenosis monogenetic parasite completing its life cycle in a single host it does not require two hosts like a malaria and they have an asexual generation in the life cycle so what are the symptoms that you can experience constipation abdominal pain and cramps the stool with excess mucus and blood cells so as i already said the other name of this disease is also called as amoebic dysentery the difference between diarrhea and dysentery is that diarrhea is just a loose stool that comes out of a person but when i say dysentery along with stool you also get blood coming out okay so here you have the life, life cycle of entamoeba histolytica the infectious stage of this is a cyst okay they enter as cyst they convert into trophozoid and you also have some um, uh, antibiotics that are given for this you have metronazole and all that will be uh, incorporated here then you have um, so as i already mentioned the symptoms are constipation abdominal pain and if it is untreated it may cause other severe symptoms like it is said to affect the other it starts affecting and spreading to the other organs of the body they say okay so that is what is explained here it is mostly uh, confined to the intestinal part but once you once the person is left untreated these growth this growth seems to spread to the other parts of the body as well okay and it develops into pulmonary amoebiosis also okay next we are moving on to the next protozoan disease a very common disease which is called as leishmaniasis and this is caused by leishmania donovani it's a chronic disease that is caused by leishmania donovani a unicellular parasitic protozoan it's a diagenetic parasite it requires two hosts to complete its life cycle like malaria that is also diagenetic this disease is also called as kalazar or dum dum fever okay 
yeah and you have another disease called sleeping sickness which is also called as chalk's disease that is also uh, caused by protozoans and that is also a vector borne disease of protozoan which is relevant in africa and other regions where there is a lot of forest regions so that is caused by the vector called as tessi tessi fly they say i'm talking about the sleeping sickness here not leishmaniasis there are many diseases when come when it comes to protozoans but protozoans they need a secondary host for it to complete the life cycle it's mostly vector borne diseases it lives intracellularly intracellularly in the endothelial linings of the blood vessels then bone marrow liver wbcs and spleen okay let's move on so this is the life cycle of leishmania donovani okay so you can see how the growth starts right you can see the different stages it undergoes right promastigot in injected into the man by sand fly the promastigot will change into a mastigot then the a mastigot will convert into macrophage the a mastigot liberated by macrophage is carried to the visceral organs a mastigot in peripheral blood sucked by the sand fly a mastigot will change into pro mastigot again pro mastigot will mu multiply and the pro mastigot is in the foregut and this is how the cycle revolves okay next we are coming on to the diseases caused by helminths which are also known as worm diseases or worm infestations now coming to the first disease here we have ascariasis okay ascariasis is caused by the organism ascaris lumbricoides okay it is the largest nematode or the round worm affecting the human alimentary canal the male worm is shorter about 15 to 25 cm while the female is longer with 25 to 40 cm in length the symptoms of this disease include internal bleeding okay if it is untreated they seem to multiply in lot and they seem to take in all the nourishment whatever is in supply to the host that will be consumed by these worms and these kind of round worm or worm infestations are relevant in children because they consume a lot of sweets they have a quite their habits might not be that clean so worm infestations are clearly seen in children so internal bleeding muscular pain fever anemia because there's internal bleeding right and blockage of the intestinal passage So this is a life cycle of Ascaris lumbricoides if you clearly see here it's ingested right it is ingested the larvae hatch in the intestine then it moves to the lungs it moves to the trachea the pharynx swallowed and again the eggs are liberated out in the feces and once this liberated feces i mean the eggs in the feces they say that it can survive in the sand or the feces for 2 weeks it seems so they remain in active mode that is why you should not drink any contaminated water or food especially okay because that is how they gain their entry into the host then the eggs fertilize again the cycle continues so that's what they are telling here so next we are moving on to the next worm infestation or helminth disease which is called as elephantiasis right one leg gets bulges out Elephantiasis or filariasis is caused by the parasitic filarial nematode or the round worm. So the causative agent is Wuchereia bancrofti and Wuchereia malayi. So here the enlarged enlarged limbs and the cracked skin similar to that of elements. So if you see the leg can be compared with the elephant. So if you see they both they both are similar. How will the elephant leg look, look? It will look large with cracked skin that's how their skin and their leg will also look that's why it is termed as elephantiasis and conspires feature of this disease this occurs due to the abnormal accumulation of watery fluid in the tissues which is called as edema and causes severe swelling so the symptoms include filarial fever headache and mental depression so with this we complete the part four of human health and diseases and in this part we discussed protozoans fungal and helminth diseases hope to meet you in the next part with another set of discussions and information to be provided thank you for watching